Well, hello there folks, and how is it going? And welcome back to another video. It would very much seem that we have come on holidays by mistake. It is lashing rain, but well, 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 we are looking over the Atlantic essentially here, and there is a crazy thunderstorm happening. I hope you can hear it, but um, we came to this location to hopefully try and photograph this old town at the Cliffs Overlook, but, Whoa, my God, that is a cliff edge. But it is lashing rain, and we're hoping that the conditions might prove themselves. You know yourself, you're standing here looking at a storm, and it either goes one way or the other, epic or really terrible, and I'm hoping for the former. So let me go over here to the edge and show you at least an idea of the kind of photograph that we were looking to take, and, um, and let's take it from there. Wow, this is incredible. It's so... Look at me, I'm wearing a rain jacket. Who <laughs> would have thunk it? But let's head over to the edge and have a look. So folks, here we are. We have found our composition and oh my God, the light behind us is absolutely wonderful. I really hope it passes over here. Essentially what I've done with my composition is, is I've cut it in half. We've got the town that we're looking at. You've got the churning sea. And then on the left side, it's pretty much empty that I'm really hoping I can capture a bolt of lightning in. I have the interval timer set up running a time lapse. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that we can capture some lightning within that uh, time lapse. And if nothing else, there's going to be a nice time lapse. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Let's let this run through and see what we can see. So there is an incredible amount of drama and texture in the sky above this town. As you can see, it is really gorgeous. Like I was hoping for a nice bit of side light along the cliffs and, you know, I was expecting blue skies and the usual, but oh my God, this is far better than I could have possibly ever imagined. This is incredible. Really, really fantastic. So my time lapse is gone. I ended up changing the settings. We're shooting at about half a second. Just, and I've got it set to a one second interval, so it's just constantly, constantly taking pictures. I just, I'm hoping that within the 10 or 15 minutes that it runs, that I can capture a, a, a bolt of lightning. And uh, so we will see, we will see. There is lightning happening over here on the horizon, and I really, really hope that it moves this way, which it is looking like it is doing. So we shall wait and we shall see. So I don't know whether it actually caught that bolt of lightning, but there was definitely one in the scene. It just swapped over to the second memory card, so I need to wait and check it on my computer. Welcome, friends, to the ASMR Photography Studio. Oh my god i could not believe it when i found this picture in lightroom after taking a total of 2574 pictures through all the time lapses i did this one was there i yelped with joy as i seen it come up on my screen i don't know about you but when taking many time lapses to try and capture lightning the only successful way i have found to find those images is to literally go through them one by one it was excruciating but this final result made every moment worth it i cannot believe that it worked so well 
I am absolutely thrilled. When I went through my initial post-processing process for this image, I showed it to my harshest critic, which is Orla. We went back and forth debating about the way the image should look and feel. And ultimately, I settled on this darker, moodier tone, which really emphasizes the moment. My only nitpick is that the lightning is way off to the left, and it would be absolutely marvelous if it was just a bit more centralized. But if the eagle-eyed among you squint hard enough, you will see the faintest of bolts off in the distance and it just put the cherry on top for me absolutely wonderful and a key lesson in patience and also a reminder of why taking photographs is such a wonderful pursuit With the, I think I've done about maybe five time lapses and I think I just missed them <laughs> as they were in between shots, just missed some lightning. So we will see. I have to review. I've got no doubt hundreds of pictures now to have to go through. But what I've done now is I've actually put on the 10 stop uh, filter just to play around now with some long shutter speeds. Going to wait for the light to fade a bit. It is 10 minutes till the sunset. So just gonna mess around with some long exposures and wait for the blue hour. Essentially, this is what this image is now ultimately going to turn into uh, as a blue hour shot, unless that lightning image uh, has already popped up on the screen and it's like blowing your minds that you had to pause the video and be like, oh my God. So let's fire on and see what else we can muster. Here we have the result of the long exposure images that I took. I am absolutely delighted with how this one turned out. All told, I think it ran at around four and a half minutes and the way the clouds are streaking adds such wonderful dynamism to the whole scene. And the smooth water really emphasizing the ethereal energy that's in the frame. I didn't end up blending any of the street lights into this image as I felt it would have detracted away from the long exposure effect effect that I was ultimately trying to achieve. Thankfully the frame is still nicely balanced after a bit of post-processing so I am really really happy with how this one turned out. Long exposure photography is something that I do be apprehensive to play around with but when you yield results like this it's something that I feel like I need to do more of. Super duper happy. Well, I have absolutely no idea whether any of those is going to work. So I have to get back to the computer to go through them all and have a look. But for now, have packed up, going to get back to the van. I'm going to get something to eat because we are both pretty hungry. It was a pretty wild drive to get here in the weather, but um, it has been incredible. The light and the drama in the sky has just been absolutely magic. So fingers crossed something can come out of it all. And um, so just as I was rambling on there, the battery decided to die in the camera. But um, what I was ultimately going to say was I'm going to continue this to the next shoot. So let's get to it and I will see you there. Well, good morning, folks. We are back still at this same location. We decided to actually stay here. The, 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 the kind of camping ground uh, that you can stay here is like super close to this uh, viewpoint. Well, it's not an official viewpoint because you have to climb over the wall. But nonetheless, we are back. And um, yesterday's pictures, uh, I still haven't looked at, but you have probably seen now at this stage. I'm super happy with those super long exposures that I took. Um, but I just was hoping to get a bit of light catching in the sky this morning. 
yesterday's pictures are so cold and they're so uh, they're so wet. And uh, I was really, really hoping just for a bit of warmth in the sky. And I, I'm, obviously, I'm not going to get any direct light down here. It's essentially what I'm looking at here, if you can see that. Um, but I was hoping to kind of get a bit of color in the sky, just as a contrast, you know, just to contrast the kind of super war, super cold images that we were looking at yesterday to hopefully trying to get some kind of warmth in the sky. Now, I don't know if you can see here. I hope you can. There's like a, a nice kind of leading line that we've got going on here to our right that takes us into the scene and into this town and then to the vast expanse of the sky. But on the other side of this kind of cliff edge here, there are some pr pretty harsh uh, street lights and they're ca causing a very, uh, a very awful orange glow on the water. So we'll stick around a bit anyways and see if we can kind of control that and, and, and bring it, uh, you know, try and balance all of these elements that are in the frame. But some things to look out for when you're composing your images are, are street lights like that that would ultimately blow out the bottom edge of your image. Yeah, there is a bit of light happening up there, so let's keep our fingers crossed. Anyways, I, I won't ramble too much uh, because this video may be a bit long now. I'm not too sure just yet, but um, so let's fire away and let's see what magic we can muster. So an interesting turn of events. They just turned off all of the street lights. Um, so I'm able to, the, the orange kind of washed out color that's down on the water's edge now is gone, which is really wonderful. But the town now is like very, very dark. So I think like I mentioned yesterday with those images in terms of trying to blend those kind of elements together of the artificial light, I don't think I will end up doing that for the previous images, yesterday's images, but I think I may do that for these images just because it's so dark. But we will see. It's still uh, a bit early. I think we've got maybe about 15, 20 minutes before the sun is officially up. But you can already, I hope you guys can already see that there is still a bit of, or a bit of color beginning in the sky. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and, uh, and let's see how they turn out. This is my Alaya Lacardi. I am a big fan of his work and the way that he processes his images. This is my attempt at trying to recreate that style of image. Essentially, it's a blend of time where the best of the blue hour light is blended in with the best of the sunrise or sunset light, sunrise being this case, but then you bring in the artificial light via layers and masking just to help emphasize and balance the overall frame. It's something that I've always toyed around with in post-processing many times, but never really kind of got this result. And this is one that I am happy with. Hence the reason why it has made it the cut for this video. But nonetheless, yeah, I still have lots to learn in relation to the post-processing of this style of imagery, but I do really still like the overall result and a good start to my journey of a Lyle my photography and travel photography. Okay, so I don't think we're gonna get any color. I think the image that I'm going to, or maybe that you would have seen already, uh, is probably going to be the best of the light that we're getting here. But I have just changed compositions. One of the nice things about photography is that if something isn't necessarily working for you one way, you can just change things around. What I've done is, is I've ultimately changed the composition to take away a bit of the sky and include a bit more foreground just to kind of cover the bottom from the left all the way around into the town that we're looking at here now. Don't remember the name of the town. Let's hope I can remember to pop it up on the screen here for you. But it is an incredible, incredible scene. It's such a beautiful view. And uh, it's about two and a half hours drive, maybe three hours from where we live. So we're just on the east, or sorry, uh, just on the west coast of Lisbon. So if you Google Lisbon, uh, you will head over to the west coast and you'll see it's a pretty popular uh, kind of town to come and look at. Um, but it is, it's, it's really beautiful. I'm so, so glad that we came. And, um, but look, sure, the day isn't done yet. So let's see what else uh, we can muster. I'm gonna continue to fire on here because nonetheless, the images are turning out very, very nice. Well, I'm a total sucker for the big long exposures. I put the 10 stop on 
and we're going to shoot away another few images but the battery on this camera is going to die very soon it's the last one so i better be super quick i really hope they turn out because we can see now a bit of color starting to come into the sky as the sun has come up just a small bit more so uh fingers crossed we can make some magic and uh let's get let's shoot let's shoot Ah, folks, the long exposure. It was such a wonderful, wonderful result when I seen this image pop up on the back of the camera. And then running through the usual post-processing that I do, I am thrilled with how it all turned out and how it looks and feels. This is the kind of image that I had in my mind's eye before even arriving to this location. And I am so, so happy that I was able to fulfill that brief to myself, albeit at a sunrise more so than a sunset time. Having a touch of side light of sunset light along this cliff edge would have just been absolutely magic but the soft ethereal light that the sunrise offers here is just so, so wonderful. I am really, really happy with how this image turned out. And for me, I don't know, I think it may be my favorite one, but I will let you guys decide in the comments below which one you prefer. It either goes this one or the big lightning one, <laughs> so I don't know, but I really, really love this picture. The touch of light that's caught in the clouds really just finalizes this image for me. And one that I think could do very, very well as a print. Well, folks, I am super happy with how all of these this turned out. I've got a good feeling about it all. I haven't seen any of them yet. You have, but I've got a good feeling about them. Uh, there's nothing like coming out and taking photographs. Really ignites my uh, creativity. So I really, really love it. And I am just going to stand here now and just enjoy the scene all on my lonesome. Uh, Orla's still asleep um, and there's nobody else here. So it's great. I've got the whole place to myself and I'm going to relish in it and enjoy the morning as it unfolds before me. So I am going to leave it here. So absolutely, if you enjoy, give it a like. And if you want to follow along on the rest of our adventure, then by all means, hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys on the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Have a good one.